is the Lord. Amen. The presence of God is in the house, everybody. Hallelujah. The presence of God is in the house. Uh-huh. I feel as if God on his holy throne, when he would call his, his counsel together, and he would take counsel with his mighty ones and discuss the things of heaven and the things of the earth. I feel like those are one of those moments. I look around and I see the faces and I feel as if God has assembled his holy ones together. It's like uh, we have something to do, like God is going to dispatch something from the heavens to the earth. I feel that, I feel that. I felt that when um, you and I greeted each other this morning, Sister Joy. I felt great purpose in it. The spirit of God is very strong within you. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. I felt a warm welcome from you this morning, Donald. When you walk through the door, it's good to shake your hand and see your smiling face. Amen. Amen. I believe that God brought you here today. As I look through the house, I believe God has brought us here together today. I believe there's great purpose. I believe God calls you by name. I believe that you did not choose God. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he chose you. Yes, and you might question that, and that's all right, because sometimes I question it. But you did not choose him. He chose you this day. A special greeting to the Pattersons and your family. And our hearts are with you with the loss of your brother. May God continue to bless your family and give you strength. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Sister Marie, this, this, this new outreach, it's powerful. It's God. You know, and it's good to see, you know, the family with you to help with this endeavor. Uh, uh, we believe it's something that God gave us. Amen. Feels good. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to know, Tony and Patrick, it's good to see you guys in the house always. Uh huh. Good to see you guys. You belong here. Your father Lester made sure of that. You belong here. That's right. An honorable mention to your father. He was a good man. Uh huh. And your mom. So those online greetings. If you know, Pastor Phil is not in the house today. He was on his way down. I got a call. He drives from exit 250. He called me at exit 230. <laughs> Said, Mike, I'll tell you what, what was in between the lines. I think there's great purpose to today. And uh, Pastor Phil is online today. Is that right, Brother Keith? Pastor Phil is online today, and uh, I believe meant by God. I think he was supposed to be online today. So everyone who is online today, I want you to know that there's a pastor online. Your pastor is online with you today. I think it was meant to be. So Pastor Phil, why don't you let him know that you're there? <laughs> and to all those online, um, your pastor is online today. So reach out to him, talk to him. Uh, if you have your questions, uh, ask them. Uh, because uh, if anyone can answer him, he can. <laughs> God bless you, everybody. We here at New Image Ministries, we want to uh, wish you all a happy Thanksgiving this week. And uh, we want to pray that God will impart and breathe into you on this Thanksgiving day, very uh, um, simply the spirit of Thanksgiving. So as you have taken time to be in the house of God on this week, may at this time, may he breathe into us all the spirit of Thanksgiving. Amen. And, and, and that you would know, quite frankly, something we, I want to talk to you about today, that you would know the power of being thankful. There's a, a mystery about it all. There's a mystery about it, the power of being thankful. And yes, I want to start with the 92nd Psalm. So if you have your Bible, Brother Keith is always available to us. Let us turn to Psalm 92. Psalm 92 reads, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning. Very simply, in the morning when you wake up, just say, thank you, Lord. Find something to thank him for. <laughs> Be specific. What are you thanking him for? Be specific. Not a general thank you. It will not do. <laughs> but, but discover one of his acts of kindness in your life. It's very essential. It's part of this spirit. And say thank you to God in the morning. And then, and then to mention his faithfulness 
every night. What a beautiful practice. Sometimes we get away from that very simple but powerful practice. I think God wants us to know today the power of being thankful. My goodness, the power of being thankful. The first thing we do when we wake up in the morning, we should say, thank you, Lord. And I don't know, fill in the blank. What are you thankful for? Right. And it could be very simply, well, thank you, Lord, that I woke up this morning. <laughs> thank you, Lord. As the preacher once said, I say, thank you, Lord. I have not sinned yet. It's been a real good day, but I'm getting ready to get out of bed now. And uh, I wonder how long this is going to last. <laughs> So even if it's just for a millisecond in the twilight or just opening your eyes, say, thank you, Lord, for so far so good. <laughs> but then when you lay your head down to, the rest, to rest at night, I pray that this would be a practice that we could rediscover. I pray it for myself and for you as well. Perhaps when you lay your head down on your pillow, you could remind yourself again and say, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Because somehow, some way, as dark as the day I thought would be, I can still say, thank you, Lord. Yes. We made it through another one. <laughs> Is that an amen, everybody? Yes. That's a good amen. So with that, you know, as we talked on Wednesday, it, it, it's noteworthy um, to think of our first Thanksgiving. Because the th first Thanksgiving was not a celebration of prosperity and abundance. It was really a, a, um, a celebration of just life. Like God, you got us through a long, hard season. And uh, not everybody is here than what first started, but they still said with all of their loss, you guys know, right? The first, the first few years. With all of the loss, they had a, a, a glimmer of light and they said, God, thank you. Thank you that we're alive. Thank you that, you know, uh, there was a harvest that year. Amen. So the thanks, the thanks is not because of God's abundance and, and success it's it's just for life itself everybody Amen. just for life itself and i think maybe god wants to bring us back to this understanding the power of being thankful amen i do not pray that god at this point i'm not praying that god changed the situations of your life because sometimes we think that's what we're thankful for no i pray rather that god would give you grace to experience your life I pray that you would not be afraid to live your life. I pray that you would have strength. I pray that in the midst of adversity, I do not pray that God remove your adversity. That's the online pastor. <laughs> I pray, no, I don't. So if you come to me, I will not pray that prayer. I pray that God would give you strength to overcome your adversity. I pray that you would become larger than life. I pray that you would conquer life and death and sorrow. I pray that you would rise above it all. And then someday when someone comes to you with their trouble, you would speak the same thing into their hearts because you can't fix everybody's problems, but you can give them strength to overcome with confidence, knowing that God gave you strength to overcome yours. Amen, everybody. Amen. Praise God. This is the power of being thankful. With that, I'd like to turn to another passage. How about 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? We'll start with verse 16. I'm going to wait for you, Brother Keith, because this is a few words in that one that uh, we're going to take a look at together. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, as far as the rendition, Brother Keith, you're on your own as usual. <laughs> Which one you got? We'll take it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to read yours. All right. <laughs> Which one is that? Okay, New King James. Okay, everybody. Uh, let's see, the first two words, say that with me. Rejoice always. Next. Pray without ceasing. Next. Okay. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. Amen. This is the will of God. The will of God, take note, sometimes God wants to heal your body. Take note, sometimes God wants to shower a blessing in your life. Take note, sometimes God will give you what you ask for. But the will of God for you in Christ Jesus is not that he 
deliver you from your plagues and give you your life of ease, to give you your pipe dreams and your success and your riches because we think that's what the ultimate life is to be lived. No, it is not. I scorn it. It is not if it leaves you in that place. No, the ultimate will of God for you in Christ Jesus is no matter where you find yourself, no matter where you find yourself, I'll repeat it again. What do you do? Rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice, everybody. Pray. I want to talk about that a little bit. Pray without ceasing. Ceasing. Give thanks. Take note. Give, give thanks in all circumstances, okay? It doesn't say give thanks after you have gone through the circumstances. Because then you get no credit. <laughs> it says give thanks in all circumstances. When you got something that's really burdening you, give thanks to the Lord. You want to know the power of a thankful heart? My God, it is the power of heaven and earth. We think we're supposed to mope and be sad, and, and if we cry to God enough, then he'll heal us. We don't know the power of God. We don't know the power of God. We don't know his mysteries and, 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 and the paradoxes of heaven. Where If you will give thanks in all circumstances, you will overcome them all. And you'll, you'll, you'll discover nothing in this life can touch you. Nothing can make you sad and hopeless. Nothing can make you tired and weary because you, you believe and you trust in God. Amen. It does not depend upon our circumstances. Sometimes we got this Christian life all mixed up. We think it's all about God changing our circumstances. We think it's God about making the, the, the broke rich and the, and the sick whole and, the, and the, the dying not die. Incorrect because we have all lived life so far. Uh-huh. So Paul, even in this passage, and even as he would always encourage the church, he would really never ask God to change their circumstances. Rather, he would, you know why? Because Paul's seen it all, man. He didn't care. You come to him weeping about some broken nail. He says, listen, <laughs> I've been shipwrecked three times, <laughs> been thrown in prison half my life, beaten more times than I can count. Forgive me for not worrying about your little mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm not going to weep over... I don't want to mention anything because it might be yours. <laughs> it might be what you're weeping about right now, so I don't want to insult you. <laughs> but Paul would say, forgive me if I don't weep over it. He says, rather I say this, give thanks in all things. He says, I'd rather give you a mystery than pray that your sorry woe go away. I'd probably, I, I, I would rather unlock the mysteries of heaven that few people know you people touch. Christians rarely take hold of it because we all want this pie in the sky. God, God called us to be rich and prosperous. What a terrible message. It certainly is not the gospel. It certainly is not the gospel. I don't know what that message is. It's not the gospel. Oh my goodness. That God's going to heal every broken body. It's not the gospel, man. That you're not going to die. and It's not the gospel. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I mean, there is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You don't need to, me to, to, to redefine all those things. But Paul said this. Paul said, I'd rather pray that you experience the grace of God. Uh -huh. No matter what comes your way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, his grace is sufficient. And if you wanted to push the envelope a little bit, you can be more than conquerors in this life without having any of those silly things on your prayer list being, being answered. Anybody still want to stay with me another minute? Or <laughs> don't make a difference, I know you're gonna stay. Brothers, lock the doors. <laughs> Ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, praise God. What a, what a great man Paul was that he would not leave his children as children. Paul would not leave the children as children. You leave the children as children by constantly meeting their temporary need rather than causing them to rise above it. He would not let them cry about their temporary need. He would cause them to rise above it. Isn't that beautiful? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you to rejoice always. And, you know, sometimes we think that, 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 that this is one of the blessings, uh, you know, in serving God. It's, it's to remove the, uh, the ailments of life. But uh, Paul would always ask for grace to walk in. You know, so many times, so many times in our lives, we just want the hard times and the hard things to leave our lives. You know, a lot of you have, have experienced some hard times in life. I'm sure you're experiencing some hard times right now. And I want you to know the will of God for you. It's not to get you out of your hard times. They will eventually go. And you know, you know what happens when they go? Bear, you just get new ones. <laughs> <laughs> And I, 
and I, I know, I know there's a, a passage in the Bible where Paul would say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And he would always say, like, I know it's better for me to be with the Lord, but it's better for you if I'm with you. And therefore, he said, I'd rather engage in your life and in the troubles of your life rather than me to leave your troubles and live my life of paradise, if you will. And I say with that, listen, we're all encouraged to, to enter into the hard times of life for ourselves and for someone else. Sometimes it's easy to disengage from people. It's easy to disengage from hard times. But God says, don't do it. God encourages us. I know he does. He encourages us. We were talking about that today, Peg, to enter into your hard times, but also enter into somebody else's hard times. Amen. You know, somebody else is going through grief or a hard time. And the first thing you want to do sometimes is remove yourself from that person's life. But they need you. Yes. Well, they're a wretch and they're a liar. And they're yes, all of the above is correct. Yes. And they desperately need you. Amen. And, and, and there's nothing but, 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 but mayhem all around them. And I'm going to disassociate myself like you want to do this. Go ahead and do that. Not going to be with me. Well, that's not the word of the Lord. It's better for them if you enter into their hard times, if you enter into their misery, if you enter into their trouble. Huh. Isn't that something? Because that's the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. It's to engage life with each other, to live it, to help each other. And then at the other end, we laugh and we, and we, and we rejoice over our victories, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let me see what I'd like to do here. Let's see. Let me give you three keys, okay? It's Thanksgiving week. I want to give you three keys. I'm not a three keys kind of a guy, but I want to give you three keys today. All right. Today, I want to I want you to experience the power of God. And I want to give you three keys to experience that power of God. Three keys. Number one, it's, it's found in First Thessalonians 516. The first one is very simple. It says this. It says, you remember what it said? Rejoice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it said rejoice. And how often do we rejoice? Yeah. Now, just in my own self, listen, I don't hear that. I don't like that tagline. I don't appreciate it at all. Don't tell me to rejoice always. Most of the times I don't want to rejoice. So I'm not a smiling kind of a guy. <laughs> I'll endure, but I won't, I won't laugh about it. But you see, rejoice always. I want to give you a key. Key number one. Note that this isn't necessarily the experience of joy, but it's the expression of joy. That means it's a choice. It's a choice. It's not the experience of joy. It's the expression of it. Be happy be happy. Express some kind of joy that's in your life. Don't wait for it to overcome you. Why don't you just grab hold of it and experience some joy? You ever do that? You ever laugh in a situation just to diffuse a tough, a tough topic? You ever, you, ever, you ever been a jokester when you know I'm just, listen, I'm just trying to create some levity here because this, this moment's going to break us all, man. Yeah, no doubt. Well, God knows that. God created it. He said rejoice always. He knows the power of a thankful heart. He knows the power of levity. He knows the power of laughter. He knows the power of lightness of heart. He knows the power that seems seemingly so overbearing in your life to just cause a little laughter. And he says rejoice always. And it's not necessarily the experience of joy, but it's the expression of joy. We need to know that. Because I think sometimes the experience of joy follows the, the expression of it. First, you've got to act happy, if you will, right? Discover something to be happy about. Yes. Discover something. I know most of the things in life we're not happy about. Find something you're happy. Can you find, I'm going to talk to you, Bear. Can you find one thing in your life? Just one thing. <laughs> I got two. <laughs> and then be happy about it, right? Praise God, everybody. That, that's being thankful. That's what being thankful really is. It, it's the expression of joy. The expression often is followed by the experience. 1 Thessalonians 5.1, it says this. It says, no matter how I feel, I can still find things to be thankful for. I still rejoice. No matter how you feel. And you know what? You can live a, a, a rotten, miserable life as much as you, you indulge yourself in that. But you don't have to. God wants to give you the power. And I know sometimes we don't want the power keys because I don't want the power key. I don't want God to tell me to be strong. I want God to give me what I want. But instead he tells me to be strong. Now that's real powerful, because when God tells you to be strong, man, something rises up inside of you that is not human. And all of a sudden, you're strong for you and everybody around you. Isn't that incredible? What a beautiful experience. God wants you to experience him, and you'll never experience him if he takes away your little trouble. You know that. He's got to give you hardships so you know how strong you are. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. You're strong enough to take care of you and everybody around you. Yeah, that's right, everybody. He says rejoice. 
And then, and a simple way of rejoice, it's really, you know, it, it's also, um, you know, it's a change of mood. I, I see it also as, as worship. I, I see it as music. You know, you know how music can, can, can quickly change anybody's mood, right? Um, I think, mu- I don't think, I know music is a gift that God has given us. It was created in the heavens. Music was created in heaven. It's a gift. The reason why this earth has music, I don't want to put tags on it, good music, bad music. Look, music, it, it, what does they say? It calms the savage beast. <laughs> All the time when we're on the job sites, what's the first thing we do? First thing in the morning, guys. What's the first thing I say every morning? Get the radio. Get the radio. <laughs> Get, the radio. <laughs> Get the radio. Music is a gift of God. Here's the one key I want to give you. Play music. You're having a hard time. Sometimes you're driving down the road. You just want silence. I'm going to encourage you. Put the radio on. Amen. <laughs> Is that all right, Chris? Just put the radio on, man. <laughs> Get out of your head, man. You're at home and the quiet. It seems too quiet at home. What do you do when you're sitting by the pool, Dad? You you put the radio on. <laughs> my dad. I, my dad has the CDs. I know. Does anybody else have CDs besides my my elder father? Yeah. <laughs> forgive me and forgive me. My dad's got these CDs. He's got the Phil Driscoll. He's got Dino. He's got names that nobody knows anymore. Oh, uh, Randy. Well, don't get me started on Randy. <laughs> but his CD player was broken, and so we got him a new CD. Thank God they still sell CD players, right? Oh my goodness. So my dad was able to play his music again. Can you attest to the power of music? Pastor Dad, yes. it is the power of God. It changes us. Amen. It changes us. It gives us strength. It gives us joy. It gives us hope. I want you to know music is not it's created in heaven to get you through this life. Uh huh. One, one power key right there. One power key. Put the radio on, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, number two. Number two was pray continually. Now, this one fascinates me. Pray. It's not something we don't know. We're Christians. We know you're supposed to pray. But as I read this, it kind of gave me proper understanding once again. Have you ever wondered why? This is rhetorical. I say to myself, have you ever wondered why you really pray? Like, I often have heard people say, why should I pray to a God who already knows everything? I I have done this. Why should I pray? God already knows my broken heart. Why do I got to go through the pain of telling about it? He knows. God already knows my situation. Why do I got to tell him about it? You ever wonder that? Sometimes I wonder that. Why pray if God already knows everything? He already knows my thoughts. And I say that's a valid point. But we often forget that, that this, I often forget, even as I read this this morning, prayer is not for me. Uh-huh. Or, 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 or it's, 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 it's not for God to, to hear about my woes and my worries. Yes, yes, he does know. But it's not as if, you know, God doesn't need to hear us pray. He, he isn't in heaven saying, I feel so weak right now. I need people to pray to give me strength. You ever see the movie Elf? where uh, Santa's um, sled was losing power and he needed people to believe in him to make the the sleigh fly. That's not our God. (laughs) He don't need your prayer to help him fly. What I meant to say earlier is prayer is not for God. Prayer is for me. It's not for me to inform God. It's not for me to... Prayer is for me. Prayer is to say... I need God. I need God. Prayer is to say, God, I, the moment I open up my, 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 my mouth to pray, I know God is with me instantaneously. You want to have a second key? This, the first key is what? Music, 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 joyous. The second key is prayer. And you say, I don't got to pray. So, many times in my life, I wouldn't pray. It's like, I'm not going there again. You ever, you ever done? I'm not praying. I'm not praying that prayer again. I prayed it for years. I'm not praying it no more. I'm not crying about that silly thing again. But prayer, it is the power of God. Yes. Prayer releases the power of God. Uh huh. Huh. Prayer gives you the ability to get through it. Yes. Prayer could sometimes, forgive me, take a pre- take a frown and. Turn it upside down. 
<laughs> yeah. Prayer is for you. I encourage you when you are in a place of struggle or a toughness, a hard place, say a small prayer. Say a small prayer. You ever say small prayers? Say, oh, God, help me. Sometimes if I have more words than my arsenal, I'll say, God, give me the grace. You ever pray that one? Because we've already discussed he's not changing your situation. <laughs> So I say, God, give me the grace to be kind to this person. You ever do that one? Like you have no more patience left? Who's the person in your life that you have no more patience for? Starting with you, Sister Sandra. <laughs> well, uh, you should have said my name. Well, you, sir. <laughs> Who is the person in your life that tries you the most? <laughs> say, Lord, and I say this one often. Sometimes I say, God, give me the grace to be kind. I feel like I'm going to really trance on this one right now give me the grace to be kind would you allow kind words maybe actions to come out of my mouth because right now <laughs> do you understand any human yeah. beings out there yeah. prayer is for us I say say a small prayer mm -hmm. help me Lord give me grace give me peace I encourage you I want to give you a key because sometimes these things fall away from us don't think prayer is not powerful because the first thing prayer does is it changes you Huh. It releases the power of God in your life. What does? Small prayers, long prayers. When you call that name, all heavens are opened. And everything in earth becomes real small and easy. Can anybody say amen who's actually felt that? Have you ever felt that? Isn't that something? It's the power of God. The third one. The third one. <clears throat> Giving thanks in all circumstances. Giving thanks in all circumstances. You see, when do we give thanks, everybody? And when are we grateful? When things are going well? No, because it's half and half in life. When things are going well, don't wait for things to go well. That's just a great no. Don't wait for things to go well. When everything is going your way, no. When do you give thanks, everybody? When? I'm not, oh, no, I'm not, not yet. Hold. We'll get there. And all things is correct, but not yet. When do we give thanks? Once a year at Thanksgiving? That's when we chuckle a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all circumstances. Yeah. And, um, you know, if, if you see the theme in these verses, there's a few words uh, uh, of the theme. It's, it's always, continually, and in all circumstances. Uh -huh. This is the power of God. It is always, it is continually, it is in all circumstances. You have the power of God. It is yours. The key, the third key is this, it's to be thankful. To be thankful is the power of God. Man, if you can muster that up, if you actually believe that and find something in life to be thankful for. I am practicing this one more often. I encourage you to do the same. I am practicing this one more often because sometimes, I don't know, guys. I don't know, sometimes it's like um, you're in a sad place and you, you, you think that, you know, life is just tough. Give, give thanks for what? I'd rather, tell God my, <laughs> I'd rather tell God where he's falling short rather than me to say, because <laughs> I would. I'd rather remind him of what he's not doing. But I am told rather. Because <laughs> he, he didn't read the same manual that you and I read what a Christian life is. <laughs> and it's not to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. And the third key is this, and on this Thanksgiving service, the third key is this, be thankful. Be thankful. Find something to say thank you, God, for. I can do that. I can do that, can't you? And if I find one thing, I think I'll discover, you know, I got more than one thing to say thank you for. Yes. And then if you let it go a little bit, you realize, Everybody, life is worth the living. I know it's tough, but is, is that all we're going to hear out of our mouths? Isn't it beautiful? Uh, isn't it beautiful? Aren't there joys? Don't you have something in life that you always wanted and God finally gave it to you? Isn't there something that overpowers the I don't have? My God, children of God, my God, I say to you, don't the I haves trump the I don't haves 
is when what we have greater than what we don't have. Amen. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah. So I invite you again, as I usually do, to enter this thing called life and live it to its fullest. When it's time to rejoice, rejoice. When it's time to engage in somebody's trouble, don't run from them. They need you. Be troubled with somebody else. Amen? But life is a mystery. It's your mystery. It's my mystery. It's our mystery. And it's to be lived. I say jump on in. Jump on in. But don't do it without these three keys. <laughs> You're going to need some lifelines. Because <laughs> it's, it's tough at times. So I say... The power of God, the first one is everybody, rejoice. And I want to give always a simple way to that. I do, I do recommend add music to your life. It's a gift from heaven. Uh -huh. Add music. Go find some of the oldies that you didn't. Go, go find some music. Listen to music, everybody. The second one is to pray. It's to pray. Prayer is for us, everybody. Prayer will introduce the power of heaven into your moment, into, into your moment situation. I say pray. You overwhelmed, pray. Two words, three words. How about just one simple word? Who said that? Bingo. <laughs> Help. <laughs> All right. And on this Thanksgiving Day, I say, be thankful. Find something to be thankful for. Don't just say thank you, Lord, okay? Find something. Find a specific thing in your life that you're thankful for. And say it out loud. You want to say it with somebody or just by yourself? Say it out loud. Maybe like the Psalm 92 said, when you wake up in the morning, find something specific to say thank you God for. When you go to bed at night, find something specific to say thank you for. What happened in that day that was good in God? Find something. This is the power of God to live this life. Amen, everybody. I'm going to ask our praise and worship team to come on up forward. I'm going to thank Pastor Phil for being online today. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless you all. Why don't we stand?